um, just continuing the theme of what's going on. I've seen this weird thing online with people um, shaming people who are, you know, going to going going to and from jobs that they necessarily can't get out of or they can't necessarily work from home with. I think there's been a big drive with some places, especially office places, you know, your general job where you probably fill in numbers on a spreadsheet or you share stuff on social media or you write emails or blog posts. You don't need to be anywhere physically, right? Um, there is this argument that remote working should be probably more widespread, especially in corporate settings than it is already. Uh, I think startups are quite good at it. You, some places, you know, they allow you to kind of have a couple of days home, a couple of days in the office and stuff, you know, that's all well and good. And they have the infrastructure that, to work with it, you know, Zoom and all these other platforms that you can use, Microsoft Teams and stuff. You can kind of, you know, get on uh, get on with people and have a little chat and make sure you have attending meetings, Google Hangouts. Some people are set up better than, that than others. But I think there is a wide, there is a, majority i'd imagine of the workforce especially in the uk who live check to check and also go to jobs that you can't necessarily do from home they have to physically be there right and if the place if the sector they're working in doesn't fall under the jurisdiction of having to close or doesn't have not required to close and they have to turn up for work and they have no guarantee and they have no um thing on their contract that allows them to stay at home and still get paid they only get paid the days they work to somehow shame them because they're cramming into a crowded train to go to work is incredibly incredibly smug right and it just goes to show just how i don't know what people's thinking is sometimes with this thing especially in the uk you have a lot of people who kind of spout this shit that they look they want to look after the working class and they want to fight the fight for single mothers and immigrants and stuff but when stuff like this happens you see their true colors you see that they're more probably aligned they have more in common with the tories than they do with any kind of uh you know lib dem labor party kind of idea of uh sharing the wealth or making sure everybody has a kind of quote-unquote even playing field that they don't really echo those thoughts especially when you see how people are posting the things online i just don't i don't know just rub me up the wrong way um so here's an article here from the daily mail uh this website is absolute you know flipping visual aids but let's continue um this headline says fury as at Sadiq Khan over crammed London transport that risks fuel and coronavirus spread as health secretary Matt Hannock says there's no good reason tube services have been slashed which is not true because a lot of people still need the tube they still need to get to and from work they can't afford not to go to work so to cut the tube off would be you know would hurt those people a lot how else are they going to go to and from work how else are they going to be able to support their family it makes no sense in it but you know what do I know so here's a, the text here it says Sadiq Khan faces mounting fury over cramped London transport that is risking lives tonight as cabinet minister swiped, swiped that there is no good reason tube services have been slashed um, health secretary Matt Hannock delivered a stinging rebuke to London mayor saying the London system should be running in full so essential workers okay I, I, I agree with this guy essential workers uh, do not have to be close to the other, which I definitely understand. Okay, so this, I guess, Sadiq Khan in his infinite wisdom, which, you know, he's a bit of a donor anyway, isn't he, really? But he decided to slash the services to kind of make sure people don't go on the trains, but then it's also affecting essential workers. So then in the mornings when they want to go, there's not, you know, there's not uh, five trains an hour. There's maybe now two or three, which is now uh, stressing and putting strain on the services when they're going. It just makes no sense, and it? it's just backward thinking. Um, the drive came after another day of chaotic scenes in the capital where health hazard carriages were rammed despite the unprecedented shutdown of the spirit society 500 british transport police officers will be on the rail network this evening to remind passengers that only those making essential journeys to work should be using the trains mr khan has blamed the commuters for flouting a ban on non-essential travel this is nazi in it and urged people to avoid rush hour to save lives claiming he does not have enough staff to return services to normal mr hannock went on attack as he asked at downing street press conference this evening why nhs staff and other key workers were being forced to put themselves at risk in the crowd of which is definitely true right they're the people that need to be looked after the most um people that are working in our health services and they're having to you know fight for seats and for spots on the train putting people at risk who are on there carrying the virus and spreading it to people that are trying to help and it's just yeah, you, you just, again, which this definitely lends to the idea that as much as conspiracy theories should be believed in theory, the idea that you should question everything is true. There's also this, there's also a realization that people are quite dumb in it. Like, regardless of what job they have, to coordinate a conspiracy theory, you know, with many different people, 
and have them all kind of sing from the same hymn sheet, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be more difficult than you imagine, especially when you see the kind of level of ineptitude and just pure ignorance and stupidity in the decisions that comes from people who are kind of, you know, these are experienced people who have worked in politics in different varying, in various levels. And as soon as one little tragedy happens, they all have no idea what they're doing. It sort of, it, it sort of makes you think, you know, they just, you know, they just, don't get me wrong, they're just average folks like you and I, but they don't seem to have the ability to conduct themselves with any kind of level of, you know, stillness and stoicness and calmness and ease and clarity and really hurt the situation. So how much more for concocting this crazy, you know, thing and pulling the puppet strings behind the scenes? I don't think that's true, but what do I know? Um, so and it continues here. Um, Mrs. Matt Hanok, he says, when it comes to the tube, the first and best answer is that Transport London should have the tube running in four so that people travelling on the tube are spaced out and can be further apart, which is definitely true, of being a two-meter rule whenever possible. And there is no good reason in the information um, that I've seen in the current levels of tube provision should be as low as they are. We should have more tube trains running. I definitely agree with that one. Um, earlier commuters packed in like sardines hit back at the mayor who runs the capital's public network with one victim claiming it was about saving money tweeting using the pandemic to save a few pennies exactly uh, nice work helping the people who claim to represent another London and row utter disgrace we need professional leadership at this time which which again I think I've said before I think a lot of politicians or people in politics are I can understand the worry they have right because if you come out and you're too hard about stuff and you get it wrong, you're not going to get re-elected. If you come out and you're too soft about stuff and you get it wrong, you're not going to be re-elected. So some of them are just doing this sort of like non-action thing or the most obvious thing that is available to them um, just so they can look like they're doing something. But I still think in the long run, it's going to hurt their chances more than help their chances to get re-elected. Most of them probably don't really care, I'm assuming, because, you know, I guess they got, you know, they got what they wanted out of the situation. A lot of politicians go into these jobs like becoming mayor they get the bit of clout they need. It looks good in the CV. And then from there, they can go around, you know, doing speaking gigs at charities and all that sort of stuff and earn a lot of money that way. So maybe they don't need to think about their legacy. But I don't know, man. If that was me, I would be a little bit concerned about how people viewed me, right? After I left the job, I wouldn't want to come into it and leave it a complete mess for the next guy or woman, innit? But anyway continues here uh what else did i have to say here loads of pictures of people packed in the trains in the morning um yeah no no two meter space rule there being observed singer songwriter who's this person nicole smith tweeted this is my tube this morning i live in zone four and work in zone one's hospital i love my oh sorry nhs sonographer sorry nicole smith not single songwriter my bad um she said i this is my tube this morning i live in zone four and work in zone one hospital and i love my job but now i'm risking my health just to be on this journey and jesus christ look at him and that's a what that's west ham jubilee line station i'm assuming right is that west ham looks like it bloody hell mate it's absolutely insane but yeah, um, a lot of ineptitude going around in it with that one. So again, so I'm just not a fan of the shaming on social. I just don't like people saying, oh, look at people. Like no one's listening to the suggestions. They're all going out. And it's like, look, do you think these people want to be out there? Do you think they want to be fixing train tracks and carrying slabs of concrete up and down stairs and shit? No, they're doing it because they have to feed their family, keep a roof over their heads. And if they don't turn up and pick up the concrete, they don't get paid. So, you know put down your phone stop tweeting and let the people do their work in it whilst you work on your laptop with wi-fi that you have living in your swanky apartment somewhere it's just like ugh, some people man 